Good morning. Welcome at uh, the Green Theater. My name is Roberto Procaccini. I'm a journalist. I write for La Conceria, Italian news magazine focused on the leather industry. And today we are here with uh, Ms. Sabrina Frontini, director of uh, ECEC, the Institute of Certification of the Quality for the Leather Sector, and Luca Boltri, that's the vice director of UNICH, the Italian Association of the Tanner Sector. Uh, ECEC and UNICH has uh, recently uh, joined the force to promote a new certificate. Uh, and this cert certificate is the ethical claim for the leather sector. And uh, the fun thing is that uh, while the claim usually in the advertisement, in the commercial, is something emotional, is something really strong, just do it, think different. In this case, the claim is really descriptive. We recover our eyes and skins from the food industry. Just because this is a, a true, uh, a fact, that uh, a lot of people nowadays uh, misunderstand. So there's a context of fake information or fake news that uh, n nowadays needs a tool of, uh, to clarify this point. I want just to ask to Mr. Boltry if he can uh, begin from the context. Why do you feel the need of this claim? Thank you, thank you, Roberto, and welcome. Um, yeah, the, the, um, as, uh, as you said, uh, uh, the claim uh, is very simple. The claim is very simple, and uh, the, the main objective is to communicate something that uh, all the operator working in the leather supply chain, in the leather industry, are well aware of. That is the fact that the tanning industry recovers a byproduct of the food industry, that are the rewritten skins, that otherwise should be dismissed in some other way with all the environmental and economical cost uh, related. So um, many of you may think that it is something obvious. So why we should stress the obvious? Because uh, in the end, in 2022, nowadays, uh, this fact is not that obvious. This is the problem. This is what we have, uh, we, uh, we have uh, mm, uh, received as a feedback, f even from many stakeholders of, uh, the, the, of the fashion industries, that keeps uh, uh, requesting guarantees to all uh, their supplying tanneries about the fact that the raw and skin that they, will, uh, that they are using comes from the food industry. They want to some proof about the fact that these materials are byproducts. Uh, so it is something that is felt even by the industry, but is mostly um, a wrong perception that has widespread in the public opinion. Um, the uh, the idea is uh, well the, the idea the, the, um, the one of the reason that we elaborate this very simple claim is that we made a survey a consumer survey a couple of years ago uh, an international survey on uh, consumers in Italy in Germany and in the uh, in the in the US about the perception of leather many different questions as you know typical uh, consumer surveys. And uh, one of the most important results of this survey is that uh, most than, uh, more than 50% of the consumers uh, interviewed for this survey thought that uh, the animals were uh, raised uh, and killed for producing eyes and skin. So it is a very, very big percentage. And uh, if it is true, it is something that we have to deal with, absolutely. And in the end, it is something true. Because another two consumer surveys that took place uh, uh, in, the, in the last two years, one uh, organized by the Spanish uh, uh, Tunnels Association and the other very recently uh, organized by the UK Leather Federation, they came to the same result, that more than half of the people, the everyday people, the consumers, uh, are not aware of the fact that the rights and skin, uh, that the biggest part of the rights and skin used by the tanning industry comes from the food, the food industry. 
So there is a need. There is a, there is a need to communicate an essential technical information um, about one of the, the characteristics of the supply chain. And uh, it is a request coming from customers. Many customers, as I said, request these kind of guarantees from their suppliers. So we think that it, would, it could be a good idea to elaborate a claim that can, in a very simple way, in a very direct and straightforward way, communicate this very essential fact that we recover our heights and skin from the food, uh, the food chain. And uh, with uh, these words, uh, we underline two basic facts. One, the recovering activities. That is, a basic activities made by the tanning industry. I stress the fact, if the tanning industry tomorrow would disappear, this ice and skin would have, be, would have been produced anyway. Because animals are raised and killed for the meat, not for the ice and skins. Um, so I always say that uh, the tanning industry is a sort of uh, um, uh, cleaners of the, food, uh, of the food industry from a certain point uh, of view. Uh, uh, and we have to stress the fact that more than 90% 90, 90 of the rights and skins used by the tanning industry comes from bovine and sheep and goat uh, animals. These animals, as I said, are raised for other purposes, not to produce raw whites and skins. And we have to underline this. This is for the Italian tanning industry, but these percentages are almost the same even at the global level, at an international level. This is a, structure, a, a structural feature of uh, the leather supply chain. And we have to stress out, to underline this, uh, uh, this fact um, to everybody. Um, we are not uh, uh, the only ones saying that the raw whites and skin are a, a byproduct. Raw whites and skin are a byproduct of the food industry. Uh, also, for the European Commission, there is a European regulation that states that heights and skin, we'll find heights and skins, uh, comes from uh, the food supply chain. So it is something that well. Uh, it, it is not only said by, by us, but it is something that is real. And uh, now we also have a, an economic report that was uh, uh, made by uh, the Montana State University last year, an econometric study called Quantifying the Relationship Between U.S. Cattle ID Prices and Value and the U.S. Cattle Production, that has proved with uh, many economical data, they, they processed uh, uh, some decades of uh, economic data like, uh, you know, number of animals raised, number of animals killed, number, uh, uh, production of meat, production of ice and skin, the prices of live animals, the price of meat, the prices of rats and skin. They, um, the Montana State University elaborates all this data and come to the conclusion that the number of cattle raised and killed would remain completely unchanged even if the market stop using leather. This is a basic fact. The tanning industry, the leather industry, cleans the environment. And this is a very, this is a very key point from a sustainable uh, point, from a sustainability point of view. And moreover, we have to consider the fact that every year, from a global po in a, on, a, on a global level, eight million tons of bovides, hides, uh, and skins are produced, are produced by, by, by the meat industry. We recover these items and skin and we transform in nearly 1,070 uh, kilome square kilometers of finished leather for the fashion, uh, the automotive, the design, the furniture industry. And without tanning, so without the, uh, the tanneries, these items would have been to be burned or disposed in landfills with significant environmental and economic costs. From an environmental point of view, it is very important to stress out, uh, UNIDO, uh, the United Nations Industrial Development Organization, uh, has uh, estimated that the burning because of these heights and skin would create 5 million tons of greenhouse gases. So we avoid, the tanning industry avoids the creation of these big amounts of greenhouse gases. This is a basic fact that should be 
stress out and we want to highlight uh, through the creation of, uh, this, uh, uh, of this claim. This claim has no copyright, there is no intention, we have no intention, we, we, we don't want to make money or something like this, we just want that these kind of messages uh, um, are used by the industry because we need to convey this message as much as we can. We all have to be united in try to give this information to the wide public, okay, to consumers, to clients, to stakeholders, to media, to NGOs as well, to everybody, because we need to educate the consumer on this fact. Because otherwise, other claims, fake news, comes and say the opposite. We need to straight this technical and scientific message to the world. Thank you. Okay, Luca. So uh, we are describing a world where uh, a context where uh, there are a lot of words and a few facts. The certification of ICEC is a tool for the tanneries and uh, works in a in a way. So what I want to ask to Miss Frontini is if she can explain how the certification works. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you, Luca, for your kind and very clear introduction to our work, because we represent uh, an institute of certification and we have always uh, to close the circle. We have to verify. We have to say that everything inside this claim is right and it is verifiable. So we start with the consideration that we recover that there is a byproduct, that the food, indus food industry produces meat, milks, and so on. And for us, to do this ethical claim, uh, we did this work uh, inspiring to the UNI ISO standard 17033, which was created for requirements for ethical claims. And uh, we wrote the claim in that way we recover our hide skins from the food industry because we need that the claim shall be easy, uh, understandable, not emotional, not misleading, uh, and verifiable. So it's very important the way through which the claim is written. From the food industry means that uh, we are speaking about uh, especially bovine, goats, sheep, pigs, so what represents more than 90-90% of all the letters. Uh, in this case, right, right now, are not included exotic letters, fours, kangaroos, because they need to be analyzed through different documents. But it is not impossible to do it, but it needs to do in a different way. The main aim of the claim is to give assurance and uh, documented evidence that the letters are coming from authorized slaughterhouses operating in the food chain. And this is our activity, what we try to do through the certification. We created some documents that are our kit documents for the audit. The standard, the program, which is the ECHEC TS733. It's the technical specification that represents uh, the uh, requirements, the program of work and to control the claim the certification rules, and also the Excel map, which is an important document to collect the data that are related to the purchase orders of the ladder, which are bought in 12 months by the, by the tannery. In fact, we start collecting the data through our traceability certification, and then we extend this analysis, adding the claim. It's a product certification. The type of finished leather shall be analyzed and shall be specified in the, in the certificate. We release annual audit. So every year we go inside the tannery to do this kind of audit and we don't accept self-declaration. Every information shall be uh, documented. Only as an example, here I have a list of mm, documents that shall be accepted in this kind of analysis. For example, documents that uh, are integrated with ladder, with the referment of the ID of the slaughterhouse related to the European regulation, 
that say that uh, uh, the slaughterhouses produce in the food industry, or, for example, that the leather are a byproduct uh, of the food industry. And at least uh, the 75% of the purchased leather shall have this kind of documents. So we control that letters are related to this kind of documents. The uh, kind of certification or um, way to move for the tannery shall be two. One, the first one is uh, uh, that the tannery certify only the claims or as we suggest, uh, is the best way, they can start doing the traceability certification through other schemes that are TS 410 and 412, because in that way they collect the data, and then they add the verification of the claim. And if they want, they can also add the uh, animal welfare risk analysis, which is an important uh, integration of this work. And if you are interested, tomorrow at uh, 3 o'clock we shall have a talk here about uh, these animal welfare uh, requirements and issues. So mm, I suggest uh, for the tanneries to do the second uh, way of uh, certification to be more complete uh, and to be more exhaustive also um, for the request of the customers. Uh, we released uh, tw mm, 30 certification for the claim and um, more or less 100 for the traceability schemes not only in Italy, but also in uh, other uh, European or uh, extra-European countries. If you want to see the names of these uh, certified companies, you can check uh, in our website, in our database. And uh, I think that um, it's a good work for the tannery. It's a complete work, especially. It's a voluntary work because uh, they can choose how to do, what certificate they, can, they, want, they prefer to do. Uh, but uh, it's important to be um, all together for the tannery with this claim because it's important to spread uh, this information uh, uh, trying to be uh, aligned on the same claim. Otherwise, probably uh, the final message is not so strong. Uh, in this way, in this sense, Sabrina, uh, I know that the certification is kind of new. You are, are working on the promotion the, of the certification. And how many tanneries have you reached in Italy? How many tanneries abroad? How are you trying to get in contact with the uh, possible uh, clients? The traceability certification are uh, well applied uh, both in Italy and uh, in other extra-European or Euro European country. The percentage is more or less uh, 80, 90 percent in Italy, and then 10, 20 percent uh, um, outside Italy. While the claim right now uh, have been applied uh, only in Italy because it's a tool uh, that is uh, um, recent. Uh, it's only two or three months that we have this kind of tool, so we need time to promote it, to spread it, and we tried to, to have our promotion also with the COTANS, for example, the um, European Association of Tanders, because we need to be all together to do this kind of work. And it's not so complicated to do it, to do it because uh, uh, customer ask to the tanneries to do this kind of traceability certification and work. So to add the claim, it's a very, very fast and quick uh, work. Okay, uh, the last question for Mr. Boltri, and how the tannery, every tannery can use this certification? Yeah, because uh, for sure we uh, uh, elaborated this very simple claim, uh, okay, then what can I do with that? Uh, well, we invite, uh, at first we invite uh, all the tanneries that use raw whites and skins that comes from the food industry to use this claim uh, uh, because the biggest number of operators uh, widespread this message, the best is for the world sector, the best is for the leather supply chain, the best is for those that love this uh, incredible material. And uh, we say, well, we, 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 we always say that this claim can be used uh, really in every uh, activity, in, in every promotional activities that a tannery is going to, 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 to organize, but also, you know, in the disclaimer of the emails, for example, all the emails, we invite uh, uh, tanneries to use it uh, at the end of the emails and say, like, uh, you know, like, uh, 
like a, a promotional message say, that, that can say something about your companies. Okay, this clay, claim can say something very important about the product that you are selling. So you can use it in the email, you can use it, uh, on, uh, you can post it on your website, uh, you can use it wherever you think that uh, it, it, it may be uh, helpful. For sure, we uh, invite to use it as much as possible in every, really, in every uh, uh, moment, in every uh, activities um, that can be, how can I say, uh, uh, useful for trying to convey this, uh, uh, this message. And well, I don't want to, 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 to beg your pardon, uh, Sabrina, it is not necessary to certify the claim. I mean, uh, uh, it is important that the claim is true, for sure. Uh, it is important that you are conveying the right message. But uh, if you want to add a further guarantee, a super partes guarantee to the customers, for example, you have to certify so that the, uh, the customer is sure that uh, a third party has said, yes, okay, you tannery has said the truth. But it is something that can be used by all the tanneries. And we are inviting, as Sabrina said, even uh, uh, um, non-Italian tanneries to use it in, uh, in, uh, in, the English, uh, in the English version. So yes, absolutely free, and it's something that can uh, help the sector to fight the fake, uh, the fake news that sometimes uh, you can see on the internet, on the social, about uh, uh, raw whites and skin and leather and uh, the animal byproducts and products and co-products and blah, blah, blah. Sometimes, maybe every day. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes means every day. We still have a few minutes. There's any question from the audience? Everything clear? So thank you for being here with us. Thank you, Luca. Thank you, Sabrina. I invite you to take a look at the program. We still have uh, events in English. So enjoy Linea Pell, enjoy the fair. Thank, thank you very you. much. Come on!